Hey filmmakers, Bobby here from Wedding Film School. And in this video, I wanna give you five ways that you are ruining your gimbal shots. A gimbal is a great tool that can be used to get some awesome and unique shots, but it's also something that can be too heavily relied on in a wedding film and can actually result in some pretty bad shots overall if you don't know what you're doing. So avoid these five mistakes if you wanna up your gimbal shot game. Starting off with the first mistake, and these are in no particular order, it's not walking correctly. Gimbals are awesome and certainly advanced pieces of gear, but you still need to walk correctly to get nice smooth shots. Heel to toe with a bend at your knees, sort of low in your stance is my go-to. If you don't do that, you're gonna see some bounce in your shot. Think about it, the gimbal has motors to compensate for movement in a lot of ways, but it does not compensate for the Z axis. If I am moving the gimbal up and down, I'm gonna see that in the footage. The next mistake wedding filmmakers are making far too often is taking more than one step in their gimbal shot. The one caveat to this is when you are doing a tracking shot, but outside of that, I personally believe that you rarely need more than one step to get the subtle movement you should be after. One step actually gets quite a bit of movement in any direction, and it keeps you shooting intentionally. Mistake number three is not sitting on your shot long enough. If you're an avid viewer of our live film reviews on Thursday evenings, you probably see us often call out shots where you're moving, say, left to right, and then after one second you shift back to the left and you haven't let that shot develop, and that issue is in the shooting itself, not the edit. Make sure you move your full move so that you have the option to include a well thought out and executed shot rather than a camera movement that shifts in one direction and back to the other and takes the viewer out of the story. The fourth mistake is not planning your shot out in advance. Now this comes on the heels of mistake number three, but without a plan, it is very easy to run around with your gimbal without any real direction. And while you will certainly get some usable shots, you are much better off being hyper intentional with your gimbal. This not only allows your shots to actually be better and well thought out, but also keeps your film from being too heavily dependent on gimbal shots in general. And of course that plan can be anything, but think about what the actual shot you want to get is and why you want to get it, plan it out and execute it. And of course it's a wedding, so that entire process lasts all of one second before you take the shot, but being intentional is going to fill your editing library with high quality, usable clips that will ultimately upgrade your end product. And finally, the last mistake that is ruining your gimbal shots is not setting your camera first. If you're constantly having to adjust your camera, you are not being intentional, you are likely cutting shots early, and you're often introducing undesired shake and movement into your shot. So before you start the movement for your gimbal shot, make sure your exposure, your white balance, and other things are dialed in to where you want them, and then go get that shot. So short and sweet today, but I think these mistakes are ruining far too many gimbal shots in wedding films that I see. And with the right plan and mindset should be easily avoidable. If you've got more mistakes that you've seen or made yourself, I wanna see those in the comments down below. And as always, be sure to check out our other content here on Wedding Film School, including a weekly podcast, The Wedding Film School Show, our live film reviews submitted by you guys, our viewers, and of course, our tutorials, gear reviews, and things of that nature. Please like and subscribe. Be sure to hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.